Welcome back to another review. I have the AlphaWise X5 Mini PC in for testing, and this was sent in via GearBest for a review. Everything that's included is out on the table, but we'll go through those individually. You do get some activation instructions included. When I booted up the Mini PC, I found that it was already pre-activated, but that's just in there. It seems to be some kind of a volume Intel license. Now the user guide is just a very basic, gives you an idea of the included ports and basic operation. Now there's no remote included with this, so you're going to need either a mini wireless keyboard mouse or your own peripherals. This is the included power cable. And we have a HDMI lead, not the longest, 80 centimeters, but might be enough if you're close to the monitor or TV. Now you might want to pause this. This is all of the specs, the main specs of the unit. You can see we have two gig RAM, 32 gig of storage, and the Intel Atom Z8 350 processor. The only thing we don't have here is the dual band Wi-Fi. We do have Bluetooth. On the back, we can see on the left button there for power, DC in, or USB 3 port, HDMI out, we have the Ethernet, and there's a 3.5 millimeter, which is headphone and microphone. Next to that is a small reset button. Now on this side, we have the SD card slot and two USB 2 ports. The top slots are just purely for ventilation. And on the underside, we have the four silicone pads and some grills there just to let some heat out. Nothing else on the other side, very much like a normal Android box in terms of the size. Now booting this up, you get a blue LED. It's fairly well diffused, but you might want to move it out of sight. And there's your choice of two operating systems. It will reboot into the last one that you've picked. Onto Android, we'll have a quick look at that. We're on Lollipop with this, so not the latest. You can see there's the Switch OS just come up there. So you can directly switch to the next operating system. And running through the settings, Pretty much standard, Intel Smart Video is their own decoding for HD video. Just showing you the device here, Android 5.1. Would have been nice to have had a slightly newer one, but you shouldn't have any problems with apps on this. And we have just over nine gigabytes of storage available. These are the included apps and it's pretty much bare bones. So it's up to you to install anything that you want. You should have enough storage space with that, but you can always use the SD card slot or USB ports. I'm now going to boot it up into Windows. Now what I'm doing with this is I'm using some capturing software. So if you see any lag on the screen, that isn't the computer. That's just the software that I'm using just to try and show you. Now the ins installed software is pretty much basic. There were a few extra games on this that were included but I removed a few of them. Everything is exactly the same as you would find on a notebook or on a desktop PC. There's no difference at all. It's the full version of Windows. Here we are in the main settings. And as you can see, this is running the 64-bit version of Windows. There's an advantage to that. You can run uh, newer software, but there's a disadvantage too. Now, looking at the storage, this is where we start running into difficulties. We only have a couple of gigs left. The most I managed to get off the box was about three gig. So we are very limited on storage. And what they've done is they've partitioned the drive in this way. I would strongly recommend that you don't mess around with that. Otherwise, you could end up with a black plastic box that doesn't do much. So don't be resizing or deleting partitions unless you know exactly what you're doing. That's a mistake that I made myself a couple of times. So I'm just passing on as a warning. So just be careful on that. I personally would have changed the way that the box was set up, but we'll come on to that a bit later on. What I would suggest doing is, as soon as you can, using something else for storage. And Windows lets you specify another drive for the programs, also pictures, videos, files like that. So pick an SD card, an external hard drive or pen drive, and install your software on that. If you download software from the web, you will need to ensure that you put it onto that drive and not the main C drive, because storage space is very tight with this box. That's the price that you pay for having a dual boot system. I can understand their thinking on this. Also, it's a very low cost system too. So I'm just showing you here, I've got the SD card and I have an external hard drive attached as well. There are very few programs installed on this, just the basic drivers. So you're gonna to need to keep those on the system. As far as web browsing, you'll be using Edge unless you install another browser. Works perfectly fine. They've improved it quite a bit. And for 4K video playback, 
there's no problems at all. Just playing this file that I took on a phone. You'll get smooth playback with HD video and 4K. These processors have integrated graphics that are quite powerful nowadays. This is a quick screen grab on the computer management. And you can see the processor here. It's uh, four threads on this processor. The Atom is pretty good. These are the scores for Geekbench 4. We have just over 2,100. And we have the OpenCL score of 4,463. So it does better than most of the mid-level Android boxes. And I also found that the Wi-Fi was also very good on speed, even though it's single band. Read speeds were good on the solid state drive, not so much on the write speeds. Now people have asked me before about playing games on these boxes, the Windows ones, and yes, you can play games like Minecraft quite well, no problems at all. You can change settings, draw distances. You're not going to be able to play some of those fancy texture packs, but it runs the standard game pretty well without any problems. The integrated Intel graphics are actually pretty good for normal gaming. You might also be able to play some older games or possibly a few games that aren't particularly graphically intensive. This isn't a gaming PC by any stretch of the imagination, but yes, Minecraft runs pretty well. This is a screen grab showing you the uh, internal heat sink. This is completely passively cooled and I didn't find heat to be a problem at all. It does get warm, but no more than that. So is the AlphaWise X5 Mini PC worth a look? It is possibly if you can deal with the storage situation and I've showed you how to do that. My own preference would have been with 32 gigabytes to go with a single Windows installation because you can always emulate Android on the Windows 10 operating system. You can also install Kodi. So as a media streamer and other things, it could work just fine in Windows. I quite like Android too, but I think it would make more sense if you had a 64 gig storage. And obviously once you start adding more memory and storage to the computer, it puts the cost up and there are other boxes available that have four gigs RAM and 64 gig storage and i put some links to those below in case you are interested so for the money and this is a super cheap box it is a viable option for some people but do bear in mind what the potential drawbacks can be so thanks for watching the video and do let me know what you think also remember to subscribe because i'll be looking at more mini pcs and android boxes in future videos